This video was made possible by CuriosityStream. Get a bundle subscription with Nebula for a limited time at just $12 a year at curiositystream.com slash H-A-I. Men are everywhere. Sometimes they're in the mirror, sometimes they're at work, sometimes they're in black, sometimes they're mad, sometimes there's two and a half of them, sometimes there's no country for them, and sometimes it's raining them, and sometimes they're all crammed onto an airplane as passengers on one of United Airlines' men-only executive flights. You see, back in 1953, United Airlines decided that between getting paid more and being allowed to wear pants, men had gone through enough hardship, and so they decided to help ease their struggle with the Chicago Executive, a special men-only air experience for high-powered male executives who love flying but hate gender equality. The Chicago Executive was a 3 hour and 15 minute flight that ran once a day at 5 pm 6 days a week between New York and Chicago. The flights were originally done on piston-powered Douglas DC-6Bs operating between LaGuardia and Midway airports until 1961 when they transitioned to Sud Aviation Caravelles, leading to an airport switch from Midway to O'Hare because of its more ample runway space, and from LaGuardia to Idlewood, which is now known as JFK and also known as Hell. In later years, the New York destination was moved again from JFK to Newark because, hey, why go to an airport that loses some luggage when you could go to an airport that loses all the luggage? But now to answer the real question. What sort of testosterone-packed features were offered on these manly flights? Well, according to this somehow real ad from the 60s, there were plenty. For starters, there was the obvious. No women and no children, but with one key exception. Two stewardesses who served food and drinks and I'm sure had their boundaries and rights fully respected by the passengers. Among the food and drinks they'd serve was a full course steak dinner because if you're going to get food poisoning on a plane, you may as well do it in style. In addition, passengers could smoke cigars or pipes on the plane because planes and fire go super well together, and all of this could be done in the comfort of a pair of complimentary slippers in either your seat or alongside promised congenial company in the lounge. But the Chicago executive wasn't all fun and airplane stakes. It was also built for these 50s businessmen to practice what they did best. Alcohol's up, uh, sorry, I mean business. That's why the planes were outfitted with personal workspaces in which you could even get live stock quotes thanks to a partnership with the Wall Street Journal, the top newspaper of America's dentist offices. Plus, if one of the busy businessmen forgot to tell one of the busy business boys who works for them some busy business information, United offered a special last-minute message service courtesy of an on-plane telephone. And believe it or not, the Chicago Executive was not the only flight that, like Saturdays, was just for the boys. In 1960, the now-defunct Mohawk Airlines launched the Gaslight Service, a somewhat bizarre Victorian-themed flight that ran on select regional flights mainly from New York and saw small, propeller-driven DC-3s decorated with red velvet curtains, gold tassels, carriage lamps, and special vintage lithographs just in case you want to fly in a plane that looks like the scene of a murder in a poorly written mystery novel. Their reasoning for making it men only was, and this is a real quote, that women would find the atmosphere cloudy because of the five cent cigars and free beer. While on the gaslight service planes, passengers were served by flight attendants who wore sequined costumes accentuated with ostrich feathers who offered those free beers and five cent cigars because what better thing to add to a fire and plane combination than free alcohol? The gaslight flights proved surprisingly popular, so much so that after a while, Mohawk kept the back reserved for men but added a family section in the front so that the kids, wife, and even grandma could all get in on the creepy Victorian fun. Ultimately, 23,000 people flew on gaslight flights, drinking over 31,000 cans of free beer and smoking over 17,000 cigars before the flights were discontinued in 1962, only two years after they began. United's Chicago executive flights, on the other hand, may not have had ostrich feathers, but they did have longevity, lasting all the way from 1953 until 1970 when they were ultimately discontinued as the result of protests by the National Organization for Women. These days, if a businessman wants to get between New York and Chicago without seeing any women, his best bet is to just grab a cab while keeping his eyes laser-focused on a list of US presidents. Or, if that list gets boring and you decide that women don't terrify you, you could check out this series with Jane Goodall called Catalyst, which is available right now on CuriosityStream. Or if gorillas aren't your thing, CuriosityStream has thousands of other top quality documentaries, including ones from Stephen Hawking, Chris Hadfield, and Edward Snowden. But here's the best part. When you join at curiositystream.com slash HAI, you'll also, at no added cost, get access to Nebula, a streaming service started by all your favorite educational YouTubers and me. 
In addition to ad-free versions of our videos, you'll also get exclusive original content, including a game show hosted by Tom Scott that I was on, an upcoming documentary project from Wendover Productions, and all kinds of other great stuff. For a limited time, they're also running their stay-at-home sale, so a whole year of both CuriosityStream and Nebula is just $12 when you sign up at curiositystream.com/hai.